YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Antha Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a custom taper fade. Stay tuned. So I'm going to start this off by saturating my client's hair and combing it in the direction that he styles. I'm also going to take this time to overlook his hard part to make sure that it was set correctly. And if it's not, I'll make any adjustments needed. So while my client's hair is still saturated, I'm going to go ahead and begin my shear work. And it's just a preference thing. I feel like I have a little bit more control while the hair is saturated. So I'm going to be giving my client a basic trim on top where he asked me to remove about an inch. So what you saw me do is I pulled up the front section of his hair and I made my initial cut to the desired length. Once I made that cut, I then pulled up a new section of hair right next to that first section that I cut. And I'm also including a little bit of that cut from that previous section so I could use it as a guide. Once I make that cut, I'll then pull up a new section right next to the section that I just cut using the same method. Once I cut that first section of hair, I'm then going to pull up a new section right behind the first section that was cut. And I'm going to repeat that process throughout this whole haircut. Alright, so now that I have the top finish and cut to the desired length, I'm going to go ahead and begin to do a side taper. So I'm coming in with my gamma hitter and I'm going to begin to set my first guideline, which is going to be my bald guide. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm going to come in with my Babyliss foil shaver and completely bald out that guide. However, when I get towards the top of that guideline, I am going to use that flick out motion so I could demonstrate a nice clean transition from completely bald to stubble because that's going to help this blend pop. So now that that's done, I'm going to come in with my Babyliss FX with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to set and create my next guideline. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm now going to close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of this guide. And little by little as I work my way up, I'm going to slightly open my lever like you just saw me do. And every time I open my lever and I work my way up just a little bit more, you're going to notice that that guide moves up with me. But that's okay because by the time I get towards the top of this guide and my lever is fully extended, it'll be completely blended out. So 
so now that that's blended out i'm gonna come in with my number one guard with the lever fully open and i'm gonna begin to set and create my next guideline i am gonna give myself the same amount of space that i gave myself with the previous guide that way i keep everything consistent with this blend what's gonna change this from a taper to a taper fade is what i'm doing right now now that my guide was created i'm now going to take that number one with the lever open all the way to the back of the bottom of his neck taper so i'm going to go from the front all the way to the back almost if i was setting in a guideline to create a fade and this is what's going to bring this together and take it from a taper to a taper fade So now that I created my guide with the lever open, I'm now going to close my lever and begin to blend in that area of the taper only. So I'm going to take this number one close and I'm going to clean up everything underneath where I just took the one with the lever fully open. Again, I'm going to take this one closed in the taper area right to underneath where I just left off with the one fully open. So typically the one close, it tends to leave weight behind and right where I just showed you, I saw a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to come in with my wall half guard with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to attack right above the shadow that I see again, right above the shadow that I see. And I'm going to use that fade down process, meaning I'm going to close my lever as needed, working my way down until that's completely blended out. One thing I want to mention is we could all see that my client doesn't have the greatest hair to blend out. A matter of fact, the shorter his hair gets, the less denser it is. So as we take it down shorter, you're going to see what I'm talking about. And this is a cut that we formulated to, to really complement the look that he's going for and still being able to give him a nice blend because he wants a nice blend. We all want a nice blend, you know what I'm saying? Well, at least most of us. And so we went ahead and put this together to, to allow that vision to come together, if you will. So sometimes you just have to get creative. We can all see that that's exactly what I had to do. I got a little bit creative and my client really loved and thanked me for that. And the outcome, we're all going to see the outcome and you could be the judge of it. Um, so right here, we're going to do the back taper and it's going to be the same exact steps that we went ahead and just did on the side taper. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed it up and let you guys ride out to the music. For anybody that's watching right now and you're not understanding exactly how to get that taper done, go ahead and comment in that comment section below and myself or somebody who is a part of this community will get back to you and we'll make sure that we get you past whatever has got you stuck.
All right, so now that I have my taper set in, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this haircut together. So right now I'm gonna come in with my wall, number two guard with the lever fully open. And just like I gestured you, on this side I am gonna use that flick up motion as I get towards the top of the hair because I'm not looking to set any harsh guideline in. However, on this side, I'm gonna take that number two with the lever fully open right up to his hard part. And you can see that I'm using the comb to assist me, that way I make sure I get all those little hairs. I know a lot of us have seen people with these comb overs and they have all those little hairs that just hang out all nappy right by their hard part. So to ensure that doesn't happen, I use my comb to make sure that the hair was laid down, that way I'm able to clean up everything nice and evenly. So I also want to mention that from this point on, everything done on this side of the head is going to be done on both sides of the head. So what I did now is I closed my lever and I begin to clean up everything underneath where I just cleaned up with that number two fully open. And we could all see that it left some weight behind. So what I'm doing now is I'm coming in with my wall one and a half guard with the lever fully open and I'm attacking right above the weight that I see. Again, that's right above the weight that I see. And I'm going to use that fade down process to blend it out, meaning I'm going to close my lever as needed, working my way down until everything's completely blended out. All right, so that number two with the lever fully open left some weight behind. So right here with the comb, I'm showing you the weight that I'm looking to remove to allow this blend to connect to this length on top. And I'm gonna use clipper over comb right now to go ahead and remove that and connect it the best that I can. And one thing that I do wanna mention is anytime you're doing clipper over comb, you could always open the lever like you see me do now. And that'll act as somewhat as a safety guide. It'll allow you not to remove as much hair. When you come in with the lever fully closed, it's very sharp, it's very, um, I don't know how to explain it, but with the lever fully open, it's almost like a softer cut. So in my opinion, it's just always better to take precaution because you can't add hair back onto the head, if you get what I'm saying. And another thing that's really important to mention is when you're doing clipper over comb, it's really important to pay attention to your client's head shape. That's the reason why I'm only angling my comb at a 45 to 90 degree angle because I'm taking my client's head shape into consideration and I'm trying to complement that the best that I can. All right, so now that I'm happy with the way everything came together, I'm gonna begin to finalize everything. So right here, I'm coming in with my gamma trimmer and I'm just cleaning up that neckline. And anytime I'm cleaning up anybody's lineup, whether it's on the neck or the forehead or wherever, I always make sure to keep everything as natural and sharp as possible. I don't want to push anybody back for no reason whatsoever. So right here I'm setting in the hard part and these gamma trimmers man they hit. If if you're questioning them, um, I'll just tell you now there's no need to. And you can see that it's sharp but it's still comfortable for my client. He's not being irritated, however he is getting a crispy lineup right now. So I'm going to go ahead and finalize everything and give you guys a look at the final cut. All right, so just to recap, this is the before and this is the after. If you got anything useful out this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only going to get doper from here. I appreciate y'all. And now more than ever, I need you to be blessed and be a blessing. I'm out.